And when we speak of violence and we think of the United States of America, which is where we reside right now, one of the things that is disturbing to me is the aspect of, of how our schools, specifically schools that are in poor areas and in inner cities that happen to be predominantly black and brown, how are starting to become more and more militarized. And to my left, we have uh, Brother John Judge, who's been doing some outstanding work in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area within uh, the, the inner city schools there in terms of getting the word out, in terms of uh, how students need to know, what, what students need to know about, you know, if they think that their only option to get into college is through the military. I know that you're getting them information that lets them know that, you know, you should never base your decision in terms of going into the military based on socioeconomic re um, uh, factors. And you're also getting that information out to their parents and, and some of the things that we all as, con as concerned citizens should know about NCLV, the No Child Left Behind Act, some of the, the things that are actually snuck under the radar. Can you mm -hmm. talk to us about your, your organization called Choices, what it does, and how people can get in contact with you if they want to get more of that information disseminated in their community, whether it's New Orleans or Chicago um, okay. or Atlanta? Well, there are national networks. There's a, one called National Network Opposed to Militarization of Youth. That's uh, on the web at N-N-O-M-Y, it's initials, uh, dot O-R-G that would link you to other national organizations, and there's quite a few that do this work around the country and networks of people that do it. Um, I've been doing it, bringing veterans into the, into the high school since the mid-60s to late 60s when they started coming back from Vietnam and were disaffected. Uh, but I think the broader picture, beyond what we do specifically to talk to the young people about their options and their alternatives, to try to counter the poverty draft, as we call it, or economic conscription, that forces them in. Uh, there's no disconnect. Uh, the use of poor communities, of especially people of color, in the military to go and fight in other countries on behalf of U.S. Uh, uh, corporate interests and uh, uh, against usually other people of color uh, is part of, part of a large picture. And in a sense, there's an old quote from Jay Gould, one of the robber barons in the 1900s. He said he could hire half the working class to kill the other half. And in a sense, what this poverty draft is doing is hiring uh, a, a sizable portion of people, people of color in one country to go and kill people of color mm -hmm. in another country. Another uh, a aspect that's happening right now is that they're so desperate to get young people into the military to fight these wars in, in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan and, and possibly soon in Pakistan or Iran. Uh, they, they are actually going to the immigrant communities here and promising people that they'll be boosted up to the front of the line on the green card if they go and bring their families in to take part in that too. Uh, but we know at least of one recent instance where someone went there and was killed during his tour of duty. And because he didn't finish, then he doesn't qualify and the family didn't qualify and they were deported. In addition to taking people here from other countries uh, who are immigrants, they've actually been going into other countries in Africa in Central America, for all I know in Haiti, and, uh, and promising people in those countries that if they join the U.S. military and go and fight these wars, and 85% of the people who are enlisting right now are going into the battlefields, uh, that then they can get U.S. citizenship when they're done. Uh, just straight sort of mercenary uh, operation. And of course the nature of the military and uh, how, how it lacks the democratic traditions that garner the rest of the society, or at least are supposed to, the military, you, you, abandon, you abandon the Constitution when you go in the military. You're fighting for everybody else's right to have a Constitution, well, privileges and rights, but you yourself don't have them as an enlisted person. You're owned 24-7 by the military. It's against the law. The military has a uniform code of military justice. It's against the law to pass around a piece of paper to try to get people to sign a petition, to organize, to change your working conditions, to hold a demonstration, uh, to form a union, to walk off the job, to talk back to the boss, to. Uh, to try, to try to refuse any order, no matter how stupid or dangerous you think it is. All of those are against the law, under the military law. They have military courts to hear the case. Everyone involved in the court, defense attorney, prosecution, judge, jury, are all in the military as well. Uh, there's a 98% conviction rate. It mostly applies to enlisted people, and it especially applies to people of color. Uh, if you're, if, if you're African-American, you're four times as likely to end up in a court-martial than a white enlisted. And in addition to that, uh, prison, they have their own prison system that's 60% black in the prisons and 85% on the death row well, in the military prisons. Than, that's a lot higher than the prison industrial complex numbers that are in the civilian world. Yes. Um, 
John, that's a good. Uh, that's a, something interesting that you bring up actually that has to do with numbers. And I have a quick question to ask you. We have may, we may have some viewers out there who are actually honing in on the fact that the military has traditionally provided you know monetary aid for folks to go to college, but there's more to, to meet the eye in terms of those numbers. Yeah. What's the actual percentage? Because what I've learned to understand is that most of the people that actually apply for the GI Bill, most of them don't get it. What is, what is the percentage? Is it, is it half? I mean, how, how many mm. people get the, G, the money that well, actually attend? It's unfortunately in? a very small percentage and um, uh, that can actually use it. And in fact, the benefits have decreased. What uh, young people's grandfathers or fathers might have had as benefits from this military, um, like how, GI housing bill, 85% of black owned homes after World War II were because of the GI housing bill. That's been stripped. Uh, in large part, and uh, uh, the, s the same with many of the other benefits, including college. In Vietnam period, you would get full college tuition all the way through four years at a university. You don't get that now. You get a, a Montgomery GI Bill provision. In most cases, you have to pay part of your salary, which is small enough already, uh, real hours, 60 hour, hour average w per week means less than they pay at McDonald's up against the real pay, and then you take a third of that and dump mm -hmm. it into mm -hmm. uh, a fund every month for the first 12 months that you're in in order to get matching funds when you get out. But if you discharge early for any reason, you're wounded, whatever, I mean, uh, or you're dumped out, uh, if you don't finish your, your term, term, term of enlistment, which is eight years, and can be longer than eight years with, with stop loss, if you, if you, if you uh, end up with a less than honorable discharge, they give grades of discharge. Uh, and one out of eight ends up with less than honorable. For African American, it's one out of three. So if that happens, not only do you not get the matching funds, the forty, fifty thousand dollars they promise you, but also uh, you don't get the money that you paid in back. And in fact, the military, to show you <laughs> how it's working, the military has made over two billion dollars, two billion dollars so far, paid in by p veterans uh, and enlisted people who never able to use that college money for a very long time. Uh, after they started that bill, uh, black enlistment kept going up percentage-wise and black college enrollment kept going down. So it was, especially in the African-American community, a false promise. Yeah. And uh, overall, 35% of the people that are even eligible to use it, eight years out, uh, most people don't go back to college. Only 35% of those eligible have ever used the GI Bill at all, and only 15% of those people using it have ever graduated from college. Forty, fifty thousand dollars sounds like a, yacht, a lot to a young person who doesn't have a bank account. Mm -hmm. But go and price what it costs to go to a university right now. You're not talking about four years of even the tuition, much less other costs. And uh, and also they don't give you a test. Um, you know when when you go in, you're not given an SAT. Uh, you know to see if you would qualify for college, so you can qualify for the money and not be able to get into school when you get out. You mentioned something stop loss. Can you explain stop loss? What exactly is stop, stop loss? Stop loss is a policy they have now that if they need you on a battlefield or a special skill, even if you've finished your legal, legal enlistment period of eight years, they can keep you in the military for an additional eight, 18 months. It's sort of what they call a backdoor draft. Uh, but they're extending the pe period of time that people have to stay in the military. Thank you very much, John Judge. Qu real quickly, before I move on to Brother Jack Gilmore, can you give the folks their information the same way I asked uh, Brother Paul Pumphrey to give his information? I'm sure there's people watching right now who actually might want to get this information or should want to get this information throughout their communities, actually to the young folks and actually to the, to the parents. Can you give them your telephone number so you can actually disseminate that information, how they can get in contact with you and build with you? Well, I think it's uh, probably best. I mean, we're one local organization there in D.C., and our materials are geared to that. But there is a counter-recruitment at yahoogroups.org, and that's a national network of, of people that do this work, and they feed articles in there and information all the time. Uh, objector.org uh, has a good deal of information. Uh, and also uh, youth4peace.org. Uh, where you can download materials uh, that can be used uh, locally. If people want to get in touch with Choices, we are at uh, P.O. Box 7147 in Washington, D.C., and our zip code is 20044. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much.